When we were looking at the hamsters, which were infected with COVID, when we were looking at the nasal tissues, we found that the virus was infecting the, what's called the olfactory epithelium, which is involved in the smell. So many patients say they can't fully taste things even after recovering from the infection. You know, could this loss be permanent? Unlikely. Uh, the French have published a large series where they found that the, a loss of smell may exist for up to 28 days after the completion of uh, symptoms. So what now uh, people are doing is that they're asking people who have sent a, loss, a sense of loss of smell is to actually complete an online questionnaire to see how long the symptoms were, how long they were infected for, and uh, when their sense of smell came back. So there's a big study going on to try and find out how long this may last for. Could being unable to taste or smell mean you're still infectious? Because 28 days is a long time. Unlikely, uh, because the, and that's why the study is going on, is to see how soon the loss of smell uh, comes on. So that is actually now one of the uh, diagnostic criteria, which is used by some countries. So yes, you can get the loss of smell whilst you are uh, in the acute stages of the infection. But as I said, it can last for 28, up to 28 days. At that stage, there may be some RNA of the virus left, but it's very unlikely there'll be, still be infectious virus. Can you do anything to, to stimulate the return of these senses? Well, I've asked the uh, ENT surgeons about this question, and they, unfortunately, the answer is no, uh, because the good news is, is that the nerve itself is not damaged. It's just the actual cells uh, which uh, sense the, um, the smell. And so it will take a while for these cells to grow back if they're damaged, but they seem to will seem to reprogram themselves by themselves. How useful is taste or smell as a sign that you have COVID? Well, in the initial stages of the infection, it wasn't really recognized, but uh, in both the UK and in France, it came up as uh, being, this is uh, an important aspect. But, uh, but some, so country, some countries were using this as part of their diagnostic criteria. The UK um, came onto it very late, later than other European countries. But the good news also is that the most recent evidence published is that the people who have the loss of smell are those with a very mild disease. So severe disease is not normally associated with the loss of smell or the loss of taste, but the mild disease tends to be associated with this loss of these two functions. Mm. Can the loss of taste and smell be an indicator of any other illnesses? Oh yes, because uh, many of the viruses which affect the upper respiratory tract can be associated with uh, loss of smell. And I think most people, when they have a cold or a flu, they'll realize that they can't taste the food and they can't smell things. Uh, and that's due to the inflammation of the mucosa around the um, area which is which can be seen in many of the upper respiratory tract infections. Mm. Okay, well, you said the UK was late to recognize these symptoms. Do you think that it has taken health organizations too long to finally recognize that the loss of smell and taste is a symptom of COVID-19? Well, other, other countries were moving on to it much, much faster, and the news reports have said that the UK should have moved on to it a bit earlier. Um, they were, they were aware of it, but they said because it's such a nebulous uh, symptom, they weren't willing to actually say this should be one of the diagnostic criteria. But now they've moved on to it. I think that that's a good thing. What about the CDC? Well, the, I say the, the Americans and the, the, the Academy of uh, Otobrine Laryngology in the US, they're proposing that this uh, loss of smell should be uh, quite an important aspect uh, to be considered. Mm. Okay, Professor John Nichols, thank you for your time. Thank you.